this is ocean to ocean this is for nothing media a podcast and conversation with nancy nethercutt who is a poet and a speaker on that which can't be put into words or <laughs> and, and, and feel free to disagree with me on that maybe that's a good place to start can this be put into words nancy right well my first book is called to kiss what cannot be kissed <laughs> so that's for sure there is no that outside of the words there's no that outside of the words yeah there are yeah. no things outside of the words yeah and what is in, what is inside of the words? <laughs> inside is a word too. <laughs> yeah. uh, the worded world, the virtual reality of separate things and events. Yes. W would you call that um, naming and claiming? <laughs> it sounds like a, a gold stake. I claim, I claim this is my gold stake. <laughs> um, naming is, no, I would never, I've never heard of that. Uh, it's just, uh, all words seem to create things. Thought is shared, learned words. Words are thought. Weave the worded world, the magician's tale this pseudo virtual reality where we live time space measurement dimension all this and that is made up mentally fabricated yeah yeah so yeah and yeah i i guess you, yeah, I haven't heard you use this word claiming. It's a word that a lot of other speakers emphasize that you, it doesn't seem to be a part of your, um, your language around this. Yeah, does, does that mean that someone claims it? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I guess it means that when it is claimed, something is limited or diminished. You know, it's it, the sense, like, the illusory sense of the self, as some people call it, you know, like so that is created downstream from the thought stream, as Michael might put it, you know, like as you might I, I might put it, I don't know, but it's the claiming is saying, oh, this is somebody's, this is a oh, ownership, mm -hmm. owning, yeah, right, owning, yeah, yeah, when, when who who could own this, you know. Well, you're just as imaginary as all the other things. So, yeah, and, and I am, <laughs> not just you. <laughs> no, so the worded world seems to weave a web, a thought dream of separate things and events and time and space and a you seemingly in the center of it. Um, yeah, a name and claim ownership. I don't, I don't use those words. I'm not really a speaker anyway, but. Yeah, I don't know what you are, Nancy. You're... <laughs> You're a poet, maybe, <laughs> but yeah, you, you're a free spirit. You're, you're a songwriter. You're a singer. You're a singer of, of this song of, of Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too. You know, I, I guess it's like, um, the, what I like about the way you put things is it, it doesn't have this taboo of being a person you know, or being something, you're, you're more embracing of whatever you're being, even if there's no center to it. Um, I would say that I'm always saying I'm still here, you know, I'm just as real as you are, just as real as tomorrow, just as real as love, just as real as enlightenment. I am an imaginary self. I'm not a non-self. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm here, you know. Um, yeah, the, the, the fabric of the thought dream that spins and erases itself is magnificent. 
you know, it's beautiful. Um, without imaginary separation, it's like a pure tone without separate notes, without overtones and undertones. There's no music, you know, so it, it is the imaginary separation, which brings beauty, which brings music, which brings love to our world. You know, the, the realization that there are no selves, no others, no separate things or events, no this or that, nor both, nor neither. Um, it brings a delicious spaciousness and feeling of unknowing and wonder and yet it is the dream as well it's not an escape from the dream enlightenment is the dream yeah, yeah. so it's uh it feels like a dream of it just feels like love so in love as love through love life flows <laughs> but it's not really moving or non-moving but that's the dance of life seems to appear like by itself. Like right now, all the trees are naked and the tiny, tiny branches are reaching out into the sky and where the other trees meet, there's this beautiful dance, you know, it doesn't have any meaning or non-meaning. It's just this beautiful dance of sky and trees, clouds, mountains. And then I look down and there you are in the galaxies, <laughs> spinning in outer space, Sart. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and this, um, is this the universe perceiving itself as Nancy, as art? Um, I use the example often, like it's like um, life kisses itself through your lips. But the universe, I don't know, because there is no universe without you. Until named, there is no universe. It's like you're an imaginary membrane between an imaginary inside and outside. You know, like a, a skin of a drum vibrating. A prism taking pure light and creating colors beautifully painting the universe uniquely your universe with memory creating things yeah so many analogies can be used and we all have different ones i'm sure whatever yeah. seems to resonate yeah yeah it's it's lovely playing with these words and concepts with you you know it's yeah like, it's it's almost like here here here's a bit of flattery that I, is very sincere, Nancy. I I feel like you're like the Jimi Hendrix of this space. I, <laughs> I feel I feel like you just go on these beautiful incendiary guitar solos in the outer space and back. You know, oh. go from sublime to you know it could be very like emotional and then very or. or all, all emotion. And then one thing that you point out that I guess you were saying something like, where does one emotion end and the other begin? Where, what is fear without naming it or love without naming it compared to other emotions? Yeah. Um, it just doesn't feel like there's separate emotions or that there's someone separate feeling them. Um, and, and that it's the name which seems to solidify this fluid liquid landscape of this sensorial display. Um, six months before the shift, joy and sorrow merged and I really couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> it's pretty astounding. Um, so I, it's not saying that there is no feeling. It's just that it's, there are no more ideas that some feelings are better than others or that there are separate feelings. Um, in the story, you know, the, I'll say, oh, the bear came and ran and I ran and I was afraid or something, you know, but the whole idea of there being separate things that are grabbed out of this is just made up and it starts to sound like a foreign language. Someone says, you know, how are you? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, 
there's no one here to be feeling any certain thing. Of course, I'll answer in a very nice way, but um, yeah, I think the idea that some feelings are better than others or some thoughts are better than others, um, that when that all left, it kind of, everything kind of merged, not into a blankness, however, but to a, into a um, inescapable, obvious, unknowable aliveness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel, I, I feel what you're saying. Yeah, I know you do. And it, it's hilarious because, <laughs> you know, like, like um, you were interviewed by Frank McCoffey, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and the way he seems to do it now is because he's always in this sort of space himself. When he interviews, there could be long pauses and an appreciation of just whatever's arising without an actual interview or active conversation happening always. But I guess I, I want the conversation. I, I, I'm i greedy. You know, I, 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 I want um, and there's nothing wrong with the way he does. It's lovely the way he does it. But yeah, I, your poet, I mean, you see, I can't even call it your poetry because it's really just this. It, you call it like singing, you know, like everyone is singing their song and and you, you're ex expressing life as life as Nancy, the only way Nancy can. And, and and there's a just stunning rawness and beauty to that, like like music. Mm. Thank you. What a beautiful thing to say. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, I never would have guessed that I would have started writing all this stuff and, you know, putting out all these books uh, It's or started crocheting or, you know, <laughs> no one knows. Uh, and I, and I love writing. I love just putting my, my fingers lightly on the keys and, and just watching those words appear. It's really magical. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's all magical, really. It's all magical. Everyone knows that life is magical deep down somewhere. They know it, they feel it. And um, somehow feeling separate from it makes people seek this magic. But the seeking is the magic. It's all magic. It's all happening by itself. Beautifully, spontaneously, naturally, self-arising and self-erasing. All of it's magic. Uh, you have a beautiful smile. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. The magic is seeking itself. That's, that's it. It's, it's the, yeah. I mean, it, like in psychological terms, they call that projection when something that's within you, you're projecting it onto something outside of you, but, but in a way that is what we're doing too. It's all, you know, the, as Michael says, you are, I guess this is from the Bible that you are the light of the world. Like whatever you see, the beauty you see in others is in, is, is actually coming from you. It's projected yeah. onto things. Yeah. Um, or, or how would you put that? Well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say that. Yes, you could put it that way. But there's no one who is the light of the world. <laughs> there's, just, there's just the light of the world. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's just like wow you know this is this is the light of the world but it's true that it's all happening within this thing that i call my brain and that our worlds can never touch only through this languaging does it seem like we can exist in this shared dream of separation so only through the words only through the songs only within the singing does the song seem to reverberate you know and you can feel the echoes in your chest in your heart and it's so beautiful we, it's like we are each other's echoes we are each other's reflections there's no source to the echo no original light no original light it's all light yeah it's all love but there's no love but it's all love is it freedom it's beyond freedom or being unfree or bound it's unfettered aliveness 
edgeless, seamless spaciousness. All and everything is included, but there are no things. <laughs> yeah, this this speaking. I mean, I think this might actually be the, in a sense, you know, one of the keys to the power of how you express, is that I, I've always I've I feel like the you can get closer to the truth by speaking in paradoxes. You can never get to it, but by acknowledging the opposites, like you say, this it, you can't get this or not get this kind of thing. And, and, but that also, the beauty of that is when you combine that with a poetic free association, just like riffing, like you're playing jazz or a guitar solo, it's, it just, I don't know what it does, but I, I think this is why the people who resonate with the way you write do is because it it captures that in a way in just the flowing of it the artistic flowing of it as well yeah. as as well as the paradox of it apparent paradox yeah um i think that ambiguous words and phrases especially used poetically somehow um can kind of skip the brain out of its usual grooves, habitual grooves, like a record, you know, can kind of skip it out of its place um, and leave the reader in a feeling of sensuous lostness um, with nowhere for the mind could go, you know, lead you down the gangplank, you know, but you can't jump in and you can't go back. Of course, all the words are known you know, tree, tree, you know, sky, sky. <laughs> I use a lot of, I use a lot, all my words are common. I don't use words that you have to look up in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Some people do. So, um, so they're all common words, but everyone's take on any word or any imaginary thing is different for them. So my, my words are going to color their world differently than they emerged here. So the painting is different. Um, and so, of course, a lot of things people will just put into the boxes of already known. That's what the mind does. The brain does. Tree, tree, sky, sky. You know, that's the already known. But when sky falls through sky or space falls through space or light falls through light, then, you know, that where does that go? How does sky fall through sky? You know, how does space fall through space? So that's like it's, there's no meaning to it. And it's you know, is it meaningless? I don't know. You know, that does, so there's no place to land. And, um, and uh, it, it feels beautiful. I, lo I love reading my old stuff. <laughs> I, I like what I write. I like it a lot. It yeah. doesn't really feel like I ever did it myself. It's just magic, you know, <laughs> all, like all of it, like all of it. Would, would, would you call it channeling? Channeling? Like from a spirit or something? <laughs> <laughs> Seth speaks. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe may, may like you said, life kissing itself through the, the poetry of Nancy. Is that? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I would just say that this knowing feeling that life does itself is the magic. You know, the feeling that, um, that it's edgeless and there's no one or thing pushing it or pulling it, um, is, it seems magical. And I, I listened to your interview with Wouter and I loved how he said that you can't know that, that life does itself. And he's right. He's right. But that's what it feels like to me. And by saying that it evokes the seamless unicity of life too by noting that we cannot find an edge. You know, maybe there is one, <laughs> right? It, we can't know. But just this feeling of spaciousness, of edgelessness, of a shoreless ocean without a surface or a bottom, you know, this shoreless, beautiful ocean of love. So that feeling of just like, this is what it's like. I, if I go like this, you know, I will say, oh, my, I'm moving my hand through space or something. But what it feels like is like a three-dimensional light show. <laughs> you know, 
no space, all space. There's no, it doesn't feel like separateness. It just feels like aliveness, fullness, no separate things, no time. So that's the feeling of it, just this fullness of utterly unbelievable, ungraspable, unknowable, super saturated spaciousness, aliveness, loveness. It is really, truly so beautiful. Gosh, it's so beautiful. If you could, you know, touch this magic and give it to someone, to give someone to share this awe. <laughs> Hi, to share this love, hmm. to share this extremely unfathomable marvel at the wondrousness of life no matter what it looks or feels like. And perhaps maybe that's why I sing, but I know that it can't be given away. So it is a beautiful longing which creates the singing, I suppose. The longing to kiss what cannot be kissed. Yeah. What, why do you think this can't be given away? And what would you say to people that want what you're describing so badly to see you what you see and experience what you experience? Um, I would just tell them that I don't have this, so I can't give it to you. Yeah. And I would just say, I love you and you're beautiful and perfect and innocent just as you are. And you already know this magic. It's trying to get it, to reach it, to hold it, to capture it, to gather it, that seems to prevent the recognition of it. Yeah. Trying to get it to capture it seems to prevent the recognition of it. Yeah. Because it's also try the trying to see it, to gather it, to capture it. That is it. And there is no it. <laughs> there is no special it. It's all special. Um, yeah, there is no meaning. It's all meaning. It's not meaninglessness. Um, there is no it to talk about, but we will sit here, you and your galaxy with the beautiful stars behind you and the light. Oh, that's the earth. I can see the planets over the cities going by. Ah, that's wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's... Uh... Yeah, it, uh, there's a question that came, but it left. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it, out of everyone I've talked to so far, Nancy, I think it's, I'm finding it the hardest to come up with questions for you in this vein, because I just get, um, yeah, lost in the, the beauty of what you're pointing to and the way you express it. It's Mm. It, it, there's nowhere to go from there but you know I, I guess the audience of nothing media in my podcast you know a lot of them would consider themselves seekers they might consider that they have an intellectual understanding of even what you're saying but they don't know how to bridge that gap I think you just gave it a beautiful answer to that it, which is trying to bridge that gap might actually be the obstacle but is there anything? Um, and, and well, as the seeker is the seeking, they cannot stop, you know. Um, I would say this is the end of all ideas of what enlightenment is. You know, what would you, people that have, feel like they have an intellectual understanding, um, what would they be without that understanding? <laughs> what would be left without all these ideas of what enlightenment is? Because this is an end of all ideas of what truth and falsehood, good and bad. Um, this is an end of all of these. Everything is cut through, sliced through. Um, 
rather viciously uh, in many people's case, at least here, yes, rather viciously, it's like an evisceration. So uh, better, worse, I mean, like I'll talk to people and I'll say, well, you know, there is no other better, more or next. And people will think about that and they go, well, yeah, that's true. There is no other better, more or next, but it doesn't happen that the sudden shift or gradual of this, of recognizing that, of realizing that, of like that becoming obvious, you know, so that it's when that's recognized or whatever, realized, I, I, I people have problems with those terms, but I don't. So <laughs> when it's, when it's known, when it's obvious, then it's there, are, it's gone. All of that hope and fear and need of this never arising next are gone. It's all gone. So that's, you know, wow. <laughs> the thought stream changes a lot when it's realized there is no self, no self to improve. Um, so then all that constant self-judgment and self-correction, that's all gone too. So whoosh, the thought stream changes a lot. So the thought stream does change. It's still there, but it's not the same at all. It, not at all. There's no worry. Um, it's like my dad is, you know, basically been in COVID quarantine now for over a month. He doesn't have it, but because of his medical condition, he can't see anyone, you know, and he may not make it out of there. But there's, I mean, a decade ago before this happened, I, I probably would have laid out all, all night, you know, worrying about it and if I could ever see him again before he dies and all of this stuff, but that's just gone. It doesn't occur. It's not like there's no caring. There's deep, deep caring for my father and for all my loved ones, right? But yeah. the, that worry, that constant worry, you know, totally gone. So that is a freedom. Mm -hmm. When there's no one to be free, it is a, it, there is a freedom. <laughs> Yeah. And all these questions about all these imaginary things are gone, but still, you know, I still go to school. I study things, I learn things, but it all seems like a mental construct. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, it, it never yeah. feels like there's solidity involved. It's known to be tapestries of air beautifully weaving themselves and the jewels sparkle where the threads intertwine, where the words intersect. There's jewels, 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 jewels. <laughs> <laughs> spinning, spinning, spinning. It's like centerless jewels. It's all reflections. You know, mm. ooh, rainbows, prisms, sparkly <laughs> things. I love sparkly things. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's um so before the shift for you into this, um there was a suffering and a seeking to be feel better. Is that yes. what would you say that is that's gone away and need to feel better? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yet, you know, I do all kinds of things for my health. Yeah. So yeah, but it's not like I lay awake at night and you know, I'm scared about dying or, you know, or someone else dying. And yeah. Well, we, we, yeah. when you, when you were younger, there was a lot of enjoyment out of taking um, psychedelics. And then prior to the shift, you said you got really high from a simple focusing on your breath meditation. Breath meditation. Yeah. 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 I did that like constantly for about a year and a half, I think like Anytime I could think of it, I was doing it. Um, boy, I got high. Yeah. And, and it was great. <laughs> and, and, and what, if it felt good, why did you stop doing that after this shift? No, this happened. Okay. What happened was oh, oh. around my 50th birthday, about yeah. 10 years ago, um, mm. it just suddenly occurred to me and it was very clear. And it was like <laughs> um, lightning striking me right through my brain and it just was so clear that all I had ever done my entire life had not brought me one step closer to what I wanted and I didn't know what I wanted I had this idea for the last year or so that what I wanted was to grok the sameness of inside and outside because intellectually I could say yeah well it's all natural processes a hiccup is like a bolt of lightning or something like that right but um and I 
intellectually, you can say everything's interconnected. So those are the types of concepts where I was coming from. But when I realized that nothing I had ever done had brought me one bit closer to this, it was like I was in a state of shock for about a month. I was just stunned. So everything kind of came to a stop. And that's when the, the roller coaster year started. Right after that ended, I had about four or five days of just intense, overwhelming bliss and joy. Oh, spectacular. And then I was just slammed into deep, deep despair and sorrow and depression. And then that would come up. And then what, every time I came up out of those, one of those, I realized that certain beliefs were just gone. You know, people would say stuff and I, I would think, oh, I don't believe that anymore. Um, I can't remember specific ones. I didn't keep a journal or anything. And then there would be more just joy, 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 joy. And then, you know, bam, bam, bam. And after about six months of that, that's when I realized that joy and sorrow were the same. And I'm like, wow, you know, this is going to be good. <laughs> Whatever this is, this is going to be good. And then for a few months I had, uh, or just at night, I would just be lying. It felt like lying on a bed of nails all night long, just petrified, terrified, having no idea what it was about. Um, and then there was a period of great mourning where my chest hurt and I felt like I couldn't breathe. And then almost a year to the time when this whole thing started, you know the story. Do you want to hear it again? Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, yeah. we clean houses for a living. So I, I was cleaning a woman's stove and I had the knob off the stove. And um, so I had a rag, you know, and I'm cleaning it like you do. <laughs> and suddenly without warning, the rag became my hand, became the knob, became the space, became the stove, became the wall. And there were no things. <laughs> it's so astounding, you know, it's just so astounding. Because I had heard there's no cell. You all, you know, you always hear that. What does that mean? Hell, I don't know. I just skipped over that part. <laughs> so I was like, wow, there's no things. And life's doing itself. And it is still amazing. And it's been ten, almost 10 years. It's just so amazing that there are no things and yet all and everything seem to appear simultaneously. It's spectacular. Yeah. So yeah. there was no, um, it wasn't because of that, that meditation or because of anything that I had done my entire life. But for some reason, that bolt of lightning that made that clear to me was probably one of the most intimate moments I had ever had in my life. Just, it was so intimate <laughs> you know this is not an armchair discussion as i always say you know enlightenment's not an armchair discussion you know and it's not you know a walk in the park if, if this is a a devastation it's a collision calamity you know it's like a speeding freight train running right into a mountain Well, it's, it sounds like the freedom from illusion, the freedom from the handholds, as you say. Yeah, there, well, there are no handholds. There are no reference points, none it's, at all. Right. They were never there to begin with. And then you see that and that's horrifying in a way, but it's also, um, I mean, it, it inspires all of this beautiful, you know, like revelatory prose and poetry because you can't describe it you can't describe yeah. that 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 spaciousness that that love that you know mm. you put all these words to it and yet you know they're they, they can't touch it yeah and they're not really meant to touch it like i said more i think the songs are just they might reverberate in someone else's heart. You know, it might feel like it's their heart song. You know, it might feel like they sang that. Mm. Yeah. It's like 
the sensuousness of it everyone knows everyone knows the magic everyone knows the sensuousness every willing one knows the spaciousness everyone knows this great emptiness which seems like it might swallow them <laughs> and everyone knows this great love but this great love is the end of all ideas of love and this overwhelming sublime emptiness is the end of all ideas of emptiness it's not like it's not emptiness like um oh look that person just took their car out of that parking spot we can put our car in there the parking spot is empty you know it's not like there was something and now there's not <laughs> it's emptiness devoid of emptiness so it's like this this one i heard of you know you take a glass and you drink the water or wine or whatever right and then you remove the sides and then you remove the bottom and then you take the emptiness out so that's another analogy mm. emptiness without emptiness and um it's devastating for here though once it was recognized there was spectacular spectacularness ever since <laughs> So I think some people have glimpses and then it's terrifying and, you know, but I never had, I never had glimpses. That's why it was so surprising. <laughs> so I was like, wow, this is really amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it, I, I do often, from my observation, my experience, you know, it, it seems like it, it does show up differently for different people, but you know, that, but that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it too. It's like, you wouldn't want a rose to pretend to be a sunflower, you know, mm -hmm. or, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's and, and and really just the bold expression of whatever is arising for the individual, the apparent individual or whatever is that's life being expressed as that. That's and and you express beautifully. And, and and yeah, you you know the questions I have that I feel like you've already answered really. Like I asked Wouter this question about his, he said he took psychedelics more than a hundred times when he was younger and and I, and I asked him if there was ever any glimpse of this from that that was like this and he said no and it sounds like you're saying the same thing yeah yeah I loved tripping I tripped a lot in the 80s a lot you know easily a hundred times I don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I never counted but I used to buy a hundred hits at a time <laughs> but you know I gave them away too it was really cheap and good then um, but it but it didn't touch <laughs> But it didn't touch this. It was something else. No, it felt like um, there was the obviousness of the perfection of all things, mm. but never, ever thinglessness. Um, and was there the feeling of dissolution of self? I don't know. I can't remember. I love yeah. the beauty. I love the rainbows. I love tripping. I really did. Um, and then I got older in my late twenties and the, the hangovers were too harsh, <laughs> mm. you know, it was too harsh of a drug. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's, that's a very fair um, description of your experience. To, yeah. I mean, the, the drug, well, yeah. Like you, you treat your body well with health and exercise and you emphasize um, you're a very so highly social person with, Lot, I, I've met so many wonderful people through your Zoom meeting and your private Facebook group that you started, Exploding Rainbows. And, and so it, it feels like this is where the colors might be arising, is in the human interactions, the, the love and experience and sharing between friends. Yeah, um, I really don't have any friends around here. We live in a small town. I spend, you know, 23 hours a day with my husband. <laughs> So we, we have a deep friendship <laughs> and he's an artist too. So we share a lot of the things and, you know, all the research I do for all of my classes, he listens in on all the lectures. So he shares that with me, which is wonderful, you know? Um, so I have that very, very intimate relationship. And now that my dad's in isolation, basically, I, I call him several times a day, but I don't really have any friends. And um, I started Rainbows so that there would be a place where people like me could sing or people who wanted to hear this or people who um, resonated or people who feel like they're in that roller coaster year or just anyone who resonates. The, the group's gotten very, very big. It seems like it's gotten less intimate than it used to be. 
and there's a lot more joking around, but that's probably good too. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's fine. It goes, it's going to go where it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. But I do, I do love having a place where you can sing because Michael and I got thrown out of so many Facebook groups. We just didn't have any place to gather. <laughs> I thought this is dumb. I'll start a group. <laughs> I felt like Andy Rooney and, you know, Judy Garland in an old movie. Let's make a play. <laughs> 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 if you build it they will come yeah yeah well you know what started in june of 2014 so i guess having around 2,000 members seems about right and there's yeah. a lot of beautiful people in there i mean there's a lot of really beautiful people and it's it's wonderful to have a place where you can be intimate and share what it's like for you like you can't go up to someone and say oh guess what there's no things, you know. <laughs> We're imaginary characters in a passion play. <laughs> so, uh, and, yeah, and I why, didn't speak speak about this to anyone for a long time. Mm -hmm. And and it does feel great to have people to talk to about this. And why would you say that is? Why is it important or enjoyable, at least, to have someone or people who relate to you on this? Um, I was kind of new at the internet when this first happened and I did search through different groups. I never, I had never heard of non-duality. So I looked in various Zen and Dzogchen groups because that's what I was interested in. And that, those are the types of books I read. And I never met anyone. I just met people who had seen through the idea of self, um, maybe, but um, no one who spoke that there were no things or non-things. And then it was over a year and a half until I met Michael in a group. And I went, oh my gosh, there's someone who knows what's going on. And it felt great. It felt great to be able to talk and explore all of these ideas like we do in the Zoom or like we're doing here. When you talk about it, you explore, you know, more words come up, more phrases come up, you know, the mind stream gets tangled in the edges and the tips of the very trees just as they're dissolving into sky. <laughs> you know, and so more jewels, more leaves fall to the ground and lilt, you know, and more phrases come, more ideas come. So it's beautiful, just like if you're talking with someone about, you know, anything else. It's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun and it's rewarding. Yeah, That's so, fun. yeah, it's just, it's, it is a lot of fun. To, to bounce ideas around and to explore places where you really can't even go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, have, have you ever, since the shift, felt compelled to just be silent in a room all day for a week or a month or something? <laughs> That's not your style. Well, like I said, I have a, a marriage. I've got things to do. I cook and, you know, I do my stuff and, you know, yeah. wash clothes and you know, I'm not a really, I'm not a clean freak or anything. I, I, I enjoy having things to do. Like I started crocheting since the shift and I went back to school since the shift. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, well, it's been 10 years. What happens in 10 years? All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Learning new dishes to cook. <laughs> it's just what, it's just natural, I think, for at least this character to look for new recipes and explore new things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very outdoor person, too. I can't imagine having to be inside all day. Would, would you say that you've you've grown that you've changed or learned or that you've gotten a, a clearer you, you found a clearer way to express this in those 10 years or no, it's it's all just I don't know. I look at the stuff I wrote in my first book and that was some of that was from 2013 or 12. And I, I love the expression in there. So yeah. it's, it's definitely evolved, um, especially how it fits on the page. They used to just ram all the words together. So um, it's, it's evolved, but uh, no, I don't think it's any clearer. I'm not trying to be clear, definitely. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I'm not, not trying to be clear. <laughs> you, you're not trying to be clear. That's interesting. No, yeah. uh-uh, uh-uh, no. You're I'm not trying to obfuscate either, but I'm definitely not trying to be clear. Yeah, well, you mentioned earlier in our talk that you, 
you think that it might bring people to a space where there's nothing to hold on to. So that's not clear. That's something else. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. almost removing everything that you think is clear. And then what is there? Yeah. That's that you put that beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, um, it's not like I sit down, okay, I'm going to write a poem that's not clear, you know, or anything. It just like, phrases come up and if I had my phone with me all the time or a pencil I would probably write three or four times as much but I think what I've got is enough <laughs> nine books is a lot of stuff yeah yeah, yeah I, I forget the adjectives you use but there's something in it that you say people don't necessarily anticipate the brutal what can be a quite brutal nature of this um shift that you had or something like that and it's um it in my my mind puts you in a similar category to someone like a UG Krishnamurti where it's this ruthless tearing away of everything that's being held on to there's no anything to hold on to and yeah I, and I so I so I, I don't even know what to say again these this conversation is really interesting because I if if we had a conversation like this a year ago I'd be asking you a lot more questions about the apparent process of how this came about. But I, I, I know that's just not helpful now. It, it's, there, there's no um, practice or process to see this. And yet your, yeah. um, your expression very well may resonate with someone and then they see it, you, you, you never know. I have been with people, talking with people, like on messenger and stuff, video and stuff, when yeah. they've had gl glimpses of this. I have been with people when they have started sobbing and I've cried with them. So I have been with people and they might have said that this speaking with me did it. Um, but for those people, when I've been with them as this glimpse happens, it's always worn off. Yeah, and so it, I've, seen, I've seen people in the group fall and crash. So I've seen this happen and it's beautiful. I mean, right before our eyes, you know? So in the group, yeah, we've seen people crash and burn. Oh my gosh, it was really beautiful to see. Yeah. Well, if, if you had to guess from your intuition or observation, why some might only have a glimpse and then when you saw this, it was a permanent, you never went back. What, what, mm -hmm. Why do you think for some it's a glimpse that, and then there's a return to this seeking belief in a, being a separate entity trying to get something? Um, I don't know. It seems like they, there, it's never been complete. It's never been a complete falling. So there's always something still in the back that says, Okay, now we've got to categorize this or fit it into old beliefs and philosophies. We've got to, we still have, there's still a grasping for it, even though it's clear. Um, gosh, one guy, oh, it was beautiful. And, and um, I was crying with him and, and, and it lasted for like a week or so. And, and but when this happens and it and uh, it goes away, usually I never hear from him again. <laughs> Later, I saw him. He was uh, uh, managing another group, you know. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. And there's no guarantee that once the falling happens, starts that it will fall. All, the people will fall all the way. I don't know why I call it falling. It's more like crashing and burning, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there's no guarantee. For sure, um, and then I don't know why. Maybe it, it just let, takes longer. Um, everyone is so unique and beautiful. People have Kundalini experiences with physical sensations and, and trembling, and for years, and there's all kinds of things that go on. Um, the so, variety, the variety yeah, of the how variety. this can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very. Other people seem to slide into it over a period of years and don't experience any of the crap that I had to go through. <laughs> <laughs> Gold, darn it! <laughs> but, but, 
but but they might have not experienced some of the peak blissful experiences you experienced either. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Well, that year was um, it was tortuous, but it was sublime also. That's true. But this is um, I don't know. I always hear people say, "Oh, you know, the self would never want this," and I'm just like, "Why not?" <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> this is more wonderful than I could ever have imagined. <laughs> Maybe not the falling apart part, but um, the integration, definitely spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 there's this old Zen saying I brought up with Wouter towards the end of, you know, the first there's mountains, then there's nothing, then there's mountains again. Is it, does that resonate at all for you? No, I, I just say there never was a mountain. Yeah, but it doesn't ma mean that we can't, you know, walk along a mountain path together and enjoy the sunshine. But there so, never was a mountain. Yeah. Well, when you when you say that the self, why wouldn't the self enjoy this? I, I think I think when people say that the self wouldn't want this is because the self doesn't want to see its own non-existence necessarily. It can't. <laughs> the self can't see its own non-existence. Right. I mean, we, we can say that this is a shift that occurs in the brain. It makes the most sense. You know, I don't know how this is known or how it's seen or what, how this is recognized. And I don't really care. Um, yeah. It doesn't make any difference, but um, it's always on and has been for about 10 years. And. <sighs> and would you say it's an unknowable mystery to try to, to say what it even is? It's not an it. <laughs> there are no it's. And that's the magic. And there is no magic. And it's all magic. <laughs> you can't you can't you can't land anywhere. No, there's no one to land. Mm -mm. And you know, I can walk along here, my my big flat feet padding along the ground. <laughs> but life is doing itself. It's obvious. There's no one holding this body up. You know, then life isn't happening to anyone, and no, no one ever did anything or nothing. So no, this isn't something that the self sees. The self is just as imaginary as tomorrow. That'd be like saying tomorrow we'll see this. <laughs> you know, an idea can't recognize that it's an idea. You know, a, uh, it's like the water in a mirage trying to recognize that it's a mirage. You know, that's, it, that doesn't make any sense. So the unknowing, it's just obvious. It's just obvious that there are no things and yet all and everything seem to appear simultaneously, inseparably. I just have a couple, that's beautiful. I just have a couple more questions, I think, because um, I know we're close to our time, but what, what, what do you think of this, this sentence, loving what is? What do you make of that? Sure. Yeah. There is a, there is a, um, it's, it's almost like there's a desire or a longing for whatever seems to appear and a loving for whatever seems to appear. What, whatever seems to appear feels like love. So it's in love as love through love. <laughs> sure um no one separate from it and no separate things and yet in the dream of separation it's like a loving caress like a delicate paintbrush a butterfly kiss as life paints itself infinite, intimate, feels and looks like anything at all. And it is wondrous. And then there is the absolute wondrousness of knowing that it's wondrous. Wow. And that's because of imaginary separation. You know, because you could say, we can all agree that there's this aliveness, right? And then we could agree that there appears to be an awareness of this aliveness, right? 
Mm. And we can also agree that there is an awareness of the awareness of this aliveness. So are there three things <laughs> or is there one thing or is there no thing? Mm. But we could probably agree that because of imaginary separation, this imaginary divide, there is a awareness of the awareness of this aliveness. So it's so, and that's like a ricochet, infinite parentheses, like wings flying, you know, two wings. So you don't fall this way or that way, but it's love soaring through love. And it's beautiful. And there can be great sorrow. I mean, um, there might be a lot of tears, um, but it's so beautiful that there's feeling. You know, it's so beautiful that you could feel so deeply, sob so deeply, love so deeply. How beautiful our humanness, you know? We share this humanness. You can see it in everyone's eyes. Everyone knows this great aloneness. Everyone knows the magic of aliveness. Everyone has loved and lost love. And how beautiful is that, that we share that? That just gives me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think that's a beautiful note to end on, Nancy. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you so much. Um, wait. For anyone who wants to find your, your books, what's the title of your latest book? And it's available on Amazon, right? The last one is The Dream of Enlightenment and The Wonder of It All. Mm. Yeah, they're all, they're all nine books on Amazon, Kindle and paperback. And they're all on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have that, you can read them all for free. Wonderful. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure you'll get some new readership and purchases, I hope, from this. Yes. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> well, well, Nancy, I'm, the, I, I'm not a very well uh, a, a very um, popular author <laughs> there's a very there's a handful of people who like what I write but, but a, deep, that's nice. a deeply loved author but from those who re adore your works and read them uh, and thank you I, Art I know this so thank you Nancy for this conversation and mm, I hope thank you, have you. A beautiful rest of your day Mm, you're beautiful and I love you. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>